Welcome to Nadal and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. Constitutional reform consultations move to Port of Spain. The Shouter Baptist community gives thanks for its first primary school. And the Prime Minister tells of new confidence in the economy. Thank you for joining us to our top story. His Excellency President Anthony Carmona has extended Easter greetings to Christians in Trinidad and Tobago. According to a statement from His Excellency, Easter is a time of reflection, celebration and thanksgiving. President Carmona says the life of Jesus Christ is a superior example of a life lived for others, of humility and love in action. He says as Christians celebrate Easter, we as a nation may wish to reflect on how we might commit ourselves to a greater sense of spirituality, community and love. Love is not love if it is not demonstrated. His Excellency says without action, even the grandest expression through words rings hollow. Love, he says, in essence, requires considering the other person's needs before your own. The President also says we live in a world and in a time when individualism is rampant and we are encouraged to see about ourselves first, to look out for ourselves and to forget our neighbor's needs. President Kamona says that mindset erodes the very fabric of the society. In other news, it's been one year since the opening of the St. Barbara's Shouter Baptist Primary School in Maloney. And as Archbishop Barbara Gray Berg tells us, she is thankful to God and the Prime Minister, the Honorable Kamla Pasad Basasa, for the school. It's been one year since the opening of the St. Barbara's Shouter Baptist Primary School in Maloney, a school that has been a long awaited dream coming to reality for many belonging to the Shouter Baptist faith. This state-of-the-art school has the capacity to hold over 400 students and can boast of music and pan rooms, as well as a science lab. To Archbishop Barbara Gray Burke, head of the spiritual Shouter Baptist community, the school represents a chance to inculcate the faith among their children and at the same time encourage a sense of value and appreciation for their history. We want to really teach our young people where we are going. They would know that not to kill, thou shall not kill. And if we started embedding to the psyche that God said we cannot breathe life into no, nobody, so we must not take a life, that our young people in the next 30 or 40 years, we will have a very, very good foundation in Trinidad and Tobago. Our vision was having schools to educate young people of our faith. The school is just one of the many achievements the Shouter Baptist faith has accomplished since the proclamation of the national holiday in 1996. It was a long, hard fight. 44 years before you could have get that. You know, it takes 34 years before you could get the ban lifted. And then you take another 44 years before you could have got a national holiday. So we have to teach our young people. In opening the school last year, Prime Minister Kamal Pasad Bisesso said a strong foundation in religion was vital to our child's education. This sentiment is also shared by Archbishop Burke, who says this element is founded in the pillars of the spiritual Shouter Baptist beliefs. But something even more dear to her heart is the provision of a chance for members of her community to come out of poverty through the teaching of this generation. We are aware that poverty, education, takes any person, whether male or female, out of poverty. And this is why we were so adamant in obtaining a school. You first have to remember, we have to get the young people to understand their religion, who they are, what they are, because we are aware that religion was thrown out the window. But we the spiritual shout about this, even though we were outlawed, we kept on the hills 
and all in the outskirts cherishing our religion. The school governed by elders in the faith seek to ensure that all-round education is provided and its beliefs are always observed. Students can be heard saying their prayers at key times during the day. Director of the Spiritual Shouter Baptist School Board, Clayton Blackman, says this represents a bigger picture and part of its strategic plan of ridding crime within communities. He notes this is what makes this school stand out. The discipline is different. The whole teaching arrangement, the whole teaching and learning process is totally different. And the kind of love and embracement that you get from our current teachers and more so the principal, just now we would not be able to even accept some, um, some students. What I would like to add though is that I would like to say thanks again for those in authority, for those who have been assisting us and to continue having faith in us those of us who are, are behind the scenes and are planning strategically for the way forward to continue giving us their support. We have a 10-point crime plan for Trinidad and Tobago. This plan has, has been given in the past to previous government and it will be given in a, a sort of revised mode to the present government. Um, education, we are taking we are looking at also the role of education. Currently, the school has approximately 130 students, with the first set of pupils carded to sit the secondary assessment entrance examination later this year. Kimbler Amkalawan, News 4. You're watching News 4, informing, educating and inspiring a culture of national pride. When we come back, the Prime Minister tells of new confidence in the economy. Welcome back. There is a new confidence in the economy of Trinidad and Tobago. This comes from the Honorable Prime Minister. She announced a $5.4 billion energy deal. As Trinidad and Tobago continues to forge ahead, leaving behind the economic downturn of 2008, investor confidence is equally on the rise. Prime Minister the Honorable Kamla Pasad Bisesa lifted the spirits of those in attendance at the Karapu RC Primary School during the People's Partnership political meeting. The Honorable Prime Minister spoke of a new deal that would bring significant returns to this country while increasing investor confidence. Investor confidence in our country is on the rise. Let me tell you something. Last Thursday, our cabinet approved the project development agreement for a new petrochemical plant the Mitsubishi Methanol to DME plant. This is a grouping of persons, a consortium. It comprises Mitsubishi Corporation, Mitsubishi Gas Chemicals, and our own Neil and Massey Trinidad Limited here. Together they are partnering in this project, which will bring jobs, open up the economy, and bring in money that will allow us to do more projects in Trinidad and Tobago. The deal is expected to bring with it jobs new energy products, and significant industrial development, among other benefits. Foreign direct investment of U.S. $850 million. That is $5.4 billion, Trinidad and Tobago. It will also bring 3,000 construction jobs, 180 permanent jobs, diversification of the energy sector, introduction of a new product known as DME, and it will be a first mover advantage for DME production in the Americas. The Honorable Prime Minister also noted that the deal will be a catalyst for industrial development of the southwestern peninsula, local content participation through Nilan Massey Limited, and a potential for reduction of subsidy on diesel as DME can be blended with diesel. She says this is one of the most significant energy products under her administration and in the same breath noted that Central Bank recently released figures to show that the local economy is in fact turning around. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. Tourism in Arima is very much alive. This comes from Arima's MP Roger Samuel who says much more development to the area is expected very soon. The luxuriant constituency of Arima is also known for its natural beauty and breathtaking sights. 
The Acerite Nature Center is one of the most popular attractions in the country, drawing visitors from various parts of the globe. Ms. Denise Etienne, who has been a tour guide at Acerite, says visitors to the center are treated to the majesty and splendor of over 30 species of birds in the country, including 13 of the 17 species of hummingbirds. Most of our birding guests are basically bird watchers. Just sitting on this famous balcony here, one can identify over 30 species of birds. Um, the majority of our guests come from North America. Um, they not only come for birding, they come for, you know, um, wildlife and the whole. We do have quite a number of other animals. They stay at Acerites and they go out birding to other hotspots, like for instance the Caroni Swamp, Blanchishes, Nariva, see the turtle watching. So it's a great, um, it's a home base and they use it to go to other spots. Usually the busy season I would say runs from December till about uh, April, May. So this is a nice getaway for anyone oh, yes. interested in anyone. watching and that kind of In nature, on the whole, you know, peace, quiet, tranquility, this is the place to be, yeah. We have about, off the balcony, as I said, you could get over 30 species, like for instance hummingbirds in Trinidad, we have 17 species of hummingbirds, and out of the 17, 13 of them have, rec have been recorded for the property which includes the smallest bird in Trinidad. It's a tufted coquette and it's just about two, two and a quarter, two and three quarter inches in length. We have things like deer, ocelot, porcupine, manicure, opossums, but you seldom see them during the daytime. They're more active at night. Wow. MP Roger Samuel was asked to list some of the things he has done to enhance tourism in his constituency and even list some of the plans he has for the future of tourism in Arima. We have begun work in developing the entire Blanchishers Road and we are working along not only with the Ministry of Works, but it, it will become a tourism situation because we're going to develop certain aspects of that area so that people can go there and enjoy the natural uh, uh, environment uh, uh, of, of the Blanchishers Road. So we began uh, work on the Blanchishers Road. We are doing it in eight mile trenches. So the first eight miles of road. Uh, is being developed now, um, drainage, and then we will uh, relay the, 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 the asphalt uh, and develop it. And then, so it goes from the, from the Calvary Hill to uh, Acerite. That's the first eight miles. And then the, the other eight miles will take it to Brassus Eco Junction and into that area. And then after that, we do from that area affiliate into Blanche shares. It's something that we are going to promote, it is something that we're going to develop through the Ministry of Works and the Ministry of Tourism um, to enhance the entire area so that it becomes a tourism site likewise and that people can travel up there and be part of this wonderful thing that happens in Arima. Um, when you look at places like Aripo, which is part of my constituency, there is a cave up there where there is a certain type of bird, it's only there, there's an oil bird that, 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 that nests there in one of the caves. It's one of the most beautiful sites. And we want to, to develop that likewise um, for the purpose of tourism, but we cannot develop it where people can go into the cave. They're gonna have to watch it from a distance because we don't want to disturb the natural habitat of that oil bird. It's the only place the oil birds go and nest and, and develop and, and produce and stuff like that. So that's in a repo. Vuna Barath, News 4. Wayne Cunningham has a sport report. Stay with us. The All Sectors Netball League 2013 will come to a climax this weekend with the closing events and the award ceremony, which will be held on Saturday at the Eastern Regional Indoor Sports Arena in Tacarigual. Fire Services and UTT are expected to walk away with most of the silverware up for grabs in the Premiership Division, with Fire having the momentum going into the final match day following their win in the knockout tournament. Here is Wayne Cunningham with highlights of that crucial triumph. Police, the Defense Force, Fire Service, UTT. The top four teams in Trinidad and Tobago Netball came to battle on Thursday for the Premiership Division knockout title in the All Sectors Netball League. In semi final number one, police faced the Defense Force and it was the military on the board first. Following good work in defense by Kinja Phillip and Crystal George, 
Carleen Sylvester showed she still had the touch to give her team the early lead. Sylvester's mobility may be hampered by some long-term knee injuries, but the eye for goal was still there. She ended with 10 goals from 21 tries. With Carleen looking dangerous, police head coach Wesley Goals was forced to make some changes, bringing in Gersha Grant at goal shoot and switching Joelisa Cooper to goal attack. And it worked, as those two started to hit their shots. The defense force at the same time went cold. Kimari James scoring only two goals from her seven attempts. Cooper was a game high scorer with 14 from 21. And Grant contributed seven from 12 tries as police ran into the final with a 22 to 13 win. Semi-final number two was a highly anticipated clash between UTT and FIRE. The university's Daystar Swift getting on the board here. But it was FIRE out to an early lead with Aisha Norman pulling the strings at centre. FIRE was playing at a different level. Jaleen Richardson, ending the move, started by Kayleen Lewis. Simone Morgan, at the end of another fine fire move, as they ran away with the first half lead, 16-11 the score. UTT never recovered from that early run, despite the efforts of Daystar Swift, who scored 11 from 19 attempts. Jalisa Allen had the same exact stats as her partner, which was not enough to challenge fire. Morgan was the game high scorer with 21 goals from 32 tries. Janelle Richardson played well in support at goal attack, scoring 8 of her 13 as fire romped into the final with a 29-22 victory. There, the police was waiting, and the score was even early in the first half. But police pulled away as a half near completion, with Gersha Grant at shoot and Jolisa Cooper at attack. During the break, the UTT crew had a mini celebration for one of their players. They would have to share the cake and ice cream with their counterparts from fire service as they went on a rampage in the second half with a fish and Noel coming on and taking over the match. She shot an amazing 99%, scoring 17 of her 18 attempts. Simone Morgan had 8 from 15 to 8 fires marched towards the title, but it was Noel doing all the second half work. 6 of 14 from Gersha Grant and 12 of 19 by Cooper was not enough for police as fire service took the Premiership Division knockout trophy in the All Sectors Netball League. We in Cunningham. News 4 Sports. News 4 continues after the break. Stay with us.
Court of Spain Mayor His Worship Louis Lee Singh is supporting the call for constitutional reform. As he voiced his support, he called for the term of office for local government officials to increase to five years. Mayor Lee Singh stated his case as consultation on local government reform moved to Port of Spain. The Port of Spain Mayor sat alongside Minister of Local Government, Dr. The Honorable Suaj Watan Rambachan, to hear citizens' views and opinions on local government reform. During his address to the crowd, Mayor Lee Singh said there are several questions that should be asked as consultation goes forward. Is the system working? Is the act, the rules and regulations which govern the conduct of local government working? In fact, does the act provide the necessary and appropriate direction for those engaged in local government? Does the act speak to the needs of the minister, the councillor, the alderman, the administration? In other words, is the act providing the framework for an effective local government system? The Port of Spain mayor explained his experience has led him to believe the time for reform of local government is now. He insisted that as is, the Local Government Act impedes the persons responsible for making the best decisions from doing so. We are more often than not rest restrained by this act, which in my view is deficient in some ways. In my mind, the act places power in the hands of the persons who should not have the power. The act consistently frustrates the wishes of the elected who seek to enhance the lives of the citizenry. In essence, the act distracts, demeans, and discourages elected members from doing for the citizens what he or she has been legally elected to do. The act often appears to forget that councillors are elected of the people, for the people, and by the people. He also suggested lengthening the term of office for council members and mayors as the current three-year period is insufficient to institute real change in a city. I truly believe that municipal corporations should be mandated in the first year. It is your responsibility to find 30% of your revenue. In your second year, 40% of your revenue. And hopefully by your fourth year, you would be up to 40% of your revenue. Which brings me to the question about the term of office. I think three years is simply preposterous. You can achieve little or nothing in three years. And therefore, I feel we should be a year behind central government and so that the elections are fixed one year always earlier than central government elections. He added that reform is needed to make all municipal corporations more accountable. I long for the day when the Ministry of Local Government will be a compliance ministry, ensuring that every municipal corporation in our country delivers on its programs which must be written and articulated and documented and made available to every Burgess within every municipal corporation. So that Burgesses can then measure what is being done, how it is being done, why it is being done, where it is being done. And at the end of a year, each individual Burgess can say whether the corporation or the council made progress or failed to live up to its promises to the people. Mayor Lee Singh added the rules governing local government must reflect the role and responsibility of each stakeholder, including administrators, members of council, and the minister, if necessary. Gregory McBurney, News 4. And that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Thank you so much for joining us.